AMD have just released their Zen 2 CPUs, and on top of that, they've also released a brand new architecture of graphics cards on 7 nanometer. This is the Navi architecture of cards with two SKUs in the product lineup, that being the RX 5700 and also the RX 5700 XT. Today here on the desk, we've got the 5700, which is coming in at 349 US dollars. In Australia, it's priced in at 549, AUD, and we'll talk about the price performance a little bit later in the conclusion. But with this release, quite a few things have happened. First of all, I'm sorry that I'm late to do this review for you guys. My super samples here actually came in super late. So that held up things in terms of reviewing. I also had some personal stuff that I had to sort out behind the scenes. And on top of that, there was all this driver controversy with pre-release drivers for both sides being a little bit buggy. So I decided to hold off and here we are now testing the post retail release driver. So this means I can give you guys the retail experience if you were to buy one of these cards, put it in your computer today and see how it performs against these two super cards. Now, although the RTX 2060S and 2070S will be in today's benchmarks, I'm gonna be focusing this review as per the title on this card in particular here, the 5700. So without further ado, let's roll those benchmarks for you, both 1080p and 1440p numbers, and then get back to the desk and see what has unfolded here. So the gaming benchmarks in a nutshell at 1080p and 1440p show that this card right here, the 5700, is actually pretty good value for money if you're comparing it to especially the RTX 2060 at the same price point, and even trades blows sometimes with the RTX 2060 Super, which comes in $50 more expensive. Now one thing with the gaming benchmarks, we'll quickly go through the titles one by one here, and we can see with uh, Apex Legends, this was a shining star for the uh, new Navi graphics cards, where this was literally coming close to, at 1080p, the RTX 2080. And so I had to retest this a few times because I couldn't believe what my eyes were seeing. Uh, stepping it up to 1440p did lose a little bit of performance, but it was great to see the $350 card was competing very hard in this particular title. Now, you've also got anti-lag, which is another feature that I took a look at when I was over in the USA. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put the link up here, where basically it can help shave off a few milliseconds and make you even more competitive, which in a game like Apex Legends, I'm guessing you will want to have. Now, next title up here, we had Dirt Rally 2, and we can see the 5700 is beating the 2060 at 1080p, and then tying at 1440p, which was an interesting trend, especially when we look at Apex Legends, where the performance was kind of uh, not scaling as well when we went from 1080p to 1440p with the 5700. Uh, though Crisis 3 was the only game where the 2060 beat the 5700, the movement of Tom Clancy's The Division 2, this was one of the three titles that we tested here today where I've seen a few things change in these games. And that is the Nvidia cards are now running better on DX12. And we'll see this with Shadows of the Tomb Raider and also another title, Strange Brigade, where something different altogether is happening with that game. Uh, but at DX12, 1080p and 1440p, the 5700 is slotting right in between the 2060 Super and the 2060. Uh, again, showing pretty good value for money when compared to the 2060 directly. And then moving on to Shadows of the Tomb Raider, it actually tied with the 2060 Super at 1080p, which was really good to see. And then 1440p, it's slightly lost, which does take a little look at the scaling of these cards. And we can see that this card is performing its best at 1080p gaming. And then moving on to Strange Brigade, I saw something interesting with this title where the game ran better on both AMD 
and Nvidia on the Vulcan engine, where as opposed to the DX12, we're getting slightly less FPS on the AMD side, but then on the Nvidia side, we're actually getting significantly less FPS. So testing these out both on Vulcan, show that the 2060 Super did come quite a bit ahead of the 5700, but then the 5700 still managed to edge out that of the 2060 standard edition. But looking at the power consumption figures, I decided to test the Apex Legends at 1080p. Uh, and we can see here that basically it's gonna vary from game to game, especially since this title did show the most FPS for the 5700. So it's utilizing that GPU in a perfect sense. And so I guess this game would use up a little bit more power on the new Navi cards than other games. But we see here, it's pretty much slotting right near a 2060 in terms of power consumption. That's overall where I'd put it, especially since I did test a few settings in Dirt Rally 2, for example, the power consumption was about 20 watts less. And we'll talk about the overclocking of this card because it relates directly to Dirt Rally 2, where we can see that uh, the auto OC in the software does work pretty well. But when we manually overclocked it, we only got one extra FPS and it became very unstable and we also were using up an extra roughly 25 watts over the auto OC. And the fan speeds, of course, I set them to 100% because I want to get the most out of this GPU possible. And the thing is, the software I don't think is ready for overclocking quite yet. And there's a few things that aren't ready for this graphics card. For instance, the Radeon image sharpening, it does look pretty good. And I'll show you guys a comparison here. You can pull it up in 4K on YouTube because I did capture it on my 4K capture card where we've got 1080p and then we've got 1080p Radeon image sharpening, and then we've got 1440p uh, on the monitor. And we can see that the image sharpening does give out a different look. I wouldn't call it necessarily better than the 1080p image, but it does give out more clarity and you really didn't lose any FPS at all. When I tested this in Strange Brigade, I only lost one FPS, 1080p versus 1080p. But here's the problem with Radeon image sharpening. When I had this turned on in Strange Brigade, uh, the whole system just shut off on the last benchmark I did, where the fan speeds were then getting locked out. And so there's a, still a software bug, and that's a dangerous thing to happen, especially on a retail driver, where if you're turning on Radeon image sharpening and your whole card is just pretty much uh, safety switching off, you have the risk to damage the hardware, which is not a good thing for AMD, nor is it a good thing for the consumer that then has to waste time and RMA the cards. So that was the second of the software problems. On top of the overclocking, when I manually OC'd it, as well as locking in the auto OC, if I alt tabbed out of a game, for example, things would just lock up the whole system. So there are a few bugs that are out there, and I do warn you guys that it is an initial release of a whole new architecture for AMD. So I think in a couple of months, this thing will be working absolutely fine. But if you wanna buy this graphics card right now, then I would recommend not sort of tweaking around with the settings or overclocking at this point in time, especially if you're not familiar with overclocking. Though speaking of the overclocks themselves, the power consumption and the fan noises, what we could see here is that the Auto OC was doing a good job, but we still got eight decibels higher of noise because the fan speeds were ramping up higher. And that did keep the temperatures a little bit lower than the default settings. Uh, honestly, it did start to get a little bit annoying and 100% fan speeds was just simply unbearable on this card. So if you really wanted to overclock at this point in time, I would recommend just locking in the auto OC until the software compatibility is improved. Also, the last thing with Radeon image sharpening, when I did turn this on, it disabled the audio coming out of the display port. So that was a little bit surprising too. Now, the final thing to talk about with these cards is the encoder on board. That is the VCE encoder. And for this, I decided to uh, take a look at Epos Vox's video. If you guys haven't seen that, I'll put a link up here, where he did an in-depth comparison between the latest NVIDIA codec versus this codec here, even versus the RX 580 codec, and then versus the software implementation. And he found with a grading system known as VMAF that the RX 580 was very similar. So if you are serious about streaming, then you may wish to check out that video where the NVIDIA codec was coming out on top. And before we move over to a conclusion, we'll quickly go over the card in terms of its physical attributes. And that is at the back, it's got three display outs, one HDMI 2.0 out, as well as a simple, clean gunmetal gray aesthetic and requiring an eight plus six pin on the back of the card. It weighs in just over one kilogram and you don't get a back plate included. And now here we are with the 5700 and recommendation time the conclusion on this is at 349 USD, it's bringing competition to the market. If you look at the raw gaming benchmark numbers, it's showing that the power consumption is good as well as the FPS is good. 
overall beating out that of an RTX 2060 at the same price. And the plus side of this as we looked at Apex Legends, if that's any indication of how much extra AMD can get out of Navi, then that will spell good times for the next couple of years in terms of bettering the architecture, optimizing the drivers for new games and extracting the absolute most out of this card. But as it stands as of this day, this is a retail release driver and there are some bugs worth mentioning. The overclocking is a little bit broken at the moment and also things like turning on Radeon image sharpening had my whole system shut off. So if you were to buy this card right now, I'd seriously recommend only just getting it, putting it in your system and not tweaking any of the software or anything, just playing your games for now and then waiting maybe a month. Once all the bugs are ironed out, can have a little bit of augmented fun with your 5700. <laughs> and no, I don't mean sexually. <laughs> but ultimately with the 5700, the price performance is there. I will be taking a look at the 5700 XT. So hopefully by the time I get that review out for you guys, I'll take a closer look at the overclocking and also the extra feature set involved and see if those bugs are ironed out. And another thing too is that the aftermarket uh, board partner cards will be hitting the scenes a little bit later. This is the only model currently available. So I'd like to see the custom solutions with dual fans, even triple fan solutions coming out and seeing how much better they can overclock as well as getting a back plate and stuff like that. Because I will say before I get on out of here that the build quality of the 2060 and the 2060 Super, especially the Founders Editions, are superior to that of the 5700. Even though it does have better price performance, there are things that were sacrificed to get that price performance. But with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's review of AMD's new Navi graphics card. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us and also stay tuned. Be sure to hit that sub button, ring the bell, because we will be taking a look at these super cards in their own dedicated review very soon. And with that aside, I'll catch you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.